As much as I would like to make this an MVP conversation, because I think those are fun and good to have and great to expand the conversation to people around the league, those efforts have been unsuccessful this season because of how good Asia Wilson has been. And I think a lot about this iconic Becky Hammond press conference from a year ago after Asia had lost the MVP award. And she comes in with this note card and has these um, very minor calculations done of what Asia's stats would look like had she played more minutes. And they all seemed a little ridiculous, like 27 points per game and 13 rebounds per game if she were averaging the same number of minutes as the other MVP candidates. And Becky was saying that it's my fault that she didn't win MVP because I kept her out of too many fourth quarters. And here we are in a season when Asia Wilson needed to play fourth quarters, averaging basically exactly the same numbers Becky Hammond said she would based on, you know, that little extrapolation of playing more minutes. She's been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you look at the seasons with the best scoring marks, the best rebounding marks, the best block marks in WNBA history. All of them, people have done those things individually. Diana scored a lot of points. Sylvia Fowles rebounded the ball a lot, you know? None of them have done collectively what Asia Wilson has done, especially when you consider the fact that her turnover rate is just bonkers. Like, she never (laughs) turns the ball over. And that's... That's an Asia Wilson who like didn't have her point guard, Chelsea Gray, for the first 12 games of the season. It's been doing so much creation from the perimeter, and yet she's so efficient. She's got the, you know, the killer midi, great drives to the basket. Like everything that you could possibly want in a basketball player, Asia Wilson exemplifies. And I mean, I'm not gonna say that I'm like confident enough in the history of the WNBA to say that this is the greatest season we've ever seen. Like Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie, by all means, um, they've done great things, but statistically, I can't find a comparison to what Asia Wilson is doing. Like every single advanced metric says that she is far and away the best thing that we've seen, what she's been doing in 2024. She's only 28 years old. Like this is not peak Asia Wilson, I don't think. I don't think we've hit it yet. No, especially when you consider how much she has improved year to year. Uh, And I'm glad you brought that up. She's only in her seventh season. So I did a little bit of math and I was thinking about, you know, what would it take for her to beat Diana Taurasi's all-time scoring record? And I I don't think it's, even ridiculous. I think it's actually probably somewhat likely that she does it. Let's say the next two seasons, she replicates what she's doing now adds 2000 points to the tally, maybe a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Then after that, all she needs to do is get 4,000 over her next six, which also feels all she needs to do. (laughs) All she know, you know, in in the, in the context of what Mm -hmm. Asia Wilson is capable of doing, not you or I, I don't, you know, (laughs) uh, maybe you, maybe I I can only speak for myself. Uh, But I mean, honestly though, these estimates, they do feel a little bit conservative. Obviously she has to stay healthy. She has to want to play for that long as well. Uh, But look, this is something that she could get done, you know, like before 40, if she decides to play until she's 40, if she, you know, like it's, she will definitely, I feel like become the second leading scorer of all time. Although Tina Charles is still running that one up. It's just right now, age is less than 3000 points away from it. So it's just, it feels like if I was to do a projection out, like I, I would not be surprised if, 10 years from now we're having this conversation and Asia is just like, she, she's breaking records on a, on a little LeBron James, like nobody else is going to catch up to me in certain categories of, although, I mean, you know, so it was actually one of the things she said about after she scored 1000, it was basically just, I'm not going to have this award for long. So I'm going to enjoy it while, <laughs> while I can. You know, one thing that really works in her favor when it comes to catching Tarazi and these historical marks is WNBA just keeps adding more and more games per season. So we're already looking at probably 44 games next year when Golden State gets added, uh, potentially more beyond that when Portland and Toronto come after that. So the the stats, like, you know, Diana's complained that there's just a lot more games. People are doing things in a lot more games, but <laughs> Asia's going to have the benefit of all of that, you know, even if she doesn't want to play until she's 42 like Diana Taurasi is. This is true. This is true. That is, that is, that is very important context. Um, Moving on, unless you do you have anything else to do you have anything else you want to say about Asia and the season she's having? I guess we could we could talk about the um the off court, the leadership. Noel Delzal actually wrote a great story in SB mm-hmm. Nation today. Um and it actually it reminded she she mentioned what you mentioned about uh how she just was so hard on herself and so so down after she didn't win MVP last year. And it feels like that is something that has shifted when you do think about the evolution of any great player, any person is like, it's not just what you do 
you know, at your job, it's, 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 it's like the growth of understanding who you are and, mm-hmm. and what you need. What do you care about? Who do you care about? How does it impact you? If you scroll Twitter and find people talking about you, how does that impact your mental health? Mm-hmm. And it's something she's talking, you know, she does still every once in a while do that. I like that she admits it. I like that Asia Wilson is just, she, she just has this side of her that's so human. I think so many athletes are just like, oh, I never see that stuff. Yes, you do. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody looks at it. Everybody looks at it. Um, but it, she she said to Noah, like, that's, you know, that's that's out of my control. If I can control it, I'm all in. But if I can't, I can't really give it a lot of energy because then I just get in my head and it's going to be a downward spiral. Am I doing enough? Is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? What's it going to be? And it made me think about I read her book earlier this year and it made me think about everything that she talked about in terms of like her mental health. I feel like she's definitely somebody who is on like the like the academic overachiever pipeline yeah. that like creates a lot of stress later on in your life when you put pressure on everything and want to be perfect. Um, and it does feel like that is something that she carries. Like she's talked about how, you know, and, uh, there are times that she hates being Asia Wilson, which I, you know, there's so many things that could add context to that. We don't really know exactly what she was talking about, but there's, there is obviously a lot that comes with being who she is, but it does feel like she has um, found even a greater level of comfort in in who she is and and what her why is like she's constant she's cried multiple times this season just talking about her teammates talking about mm-hmm. how you know they're the reason why she does this but I'm I'm just I'm I'm curious like as somebody who's more of a newer observer of of Asia like what's what's your take on you know the the year by year growth in, in those areas it's interesting when you asked me to think about my favorite Asia moments from the season I got through like six of them before I even got to something <laughs> on the court like it was just the the person of Asia Wilson is so rewarding and compelling to follow like that, that she displays her vulnerability. So often you mentioned she's cried multiple times in press conferences, that recent video of her in the locker room after she scored the 1000 points. And, you know, she's just showing all this love to queen Egbo who's been on the team for two and a half weeks, you know, and just the clearly the, the deep, deep bond that she has with her teammates and what it means to her to be on the Las Vegas aces and perform for these players. Um, I think, you know, they just, you couldn't ask for a better role model or like face of the league than Asia Wilson in terms of everything that she embodies. And the W is just so very lucky to have her in this moment. And for the last seven years, like whatever they've done for the last seven years, I hope that they're not wasting this moment going forward. Um, But I mean, Asia, she's just like, she comes out of South Carolina. She was a national champion player of the year. She's the number one pick. She's tasked with leading this franchise in a new market. All she does is just make Las Vegas probably the best place to go watch women's basketball games in the WNBA. Uh, you know, she wins MVP in her third year. They're in the finals by her third season. Then she starts shooting threes. You know, she's got the face-up game. She can score from everyone on the court. She wins two Defensive Player of the Year awards. Like, I feel like I'm missing so many things in the Asia <laughs> narrative. And yet, this has all happened, right? And she's been mm-hmm. at two Olympics, two gold medals. She was the MVP of this last tournament. I mean... There really isn't anything that Asia Wilson can't do on a basketball court. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think you got him. Almost. I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure there's more. Some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've learned um, never to slight Asia Wilson because she takes it and she <laughs> recognizes it and she builds off of it. Like if she does not win a unanimous MVP, like that's going to be just like the same slide as when she got a fourth place vote last year. Like voters beware if this is something that you want to see. Do you want to unleash more rage Asia Wilson? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually a really good take. If you are an Asia Wilson hater and Mm -hmm. you don't want to give her the unanimous MVP, if you are preying on her downfall, Mm -hmm. I think you're actually playing yourself. Exactly. Because she's going to get better. Mm -hmm. You just, you got to just give it to her. Give it to her (laughs) so we can just spare everybody else. Like just to have mercy. Give everyone else a chance, you know? Yeah, seriously. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also, um, I'm really glad you brought up South Carolina too, because I think one of the things that it's, is so moving to me personally has just been like watching her talk about her her grandma and I, I'm, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir to people who are like very familiar with Asia but for the people who aren't I, I think she has a statue in South Carolina on the same campus that her grandma couldn't walk on we talk a lot about legacy in sports mm-hmm. and we talk about it in terms of numbers we talk about it in terms of you know being immortalized on the court um and there's obviously an impact every great athlete has but that is like that's that's legacy beyond sports that's just like that that's that's something that is like beyond beyond description to me i just think it's uh, i think it's one of the coolest things ever yeah and the way she talks about it like there's no more powerful 
you know, juxtaposition between literally her grandmother couldn't walk on that campus and now she is forever memorialized there. And I mean, the legacy of Asia Wilson in South Carolina is visible in the two national titles they've won since she left there. You know, like the fact that every player in South Carolina who grows up there wants to play for SC and it's not just because of Don Staley, it's because of what Asia helped build there too. So, I mean, her legacy is in Aaliyah Boston and Joyce Edwards and everybody else who's going to be coming through for the Gamecocks in the next however long, you know, Mm-hmm. Don Staley keeps that era going, but it's it's yeah. really beautiful. And I love how much pride she takes in that. Like she is so outward about what these things mean to her. You know, she doesn't try to downplay any of it. It's like, yeah, this this statue is life-changing moment for me and my family. 